And the cool part again is if I zoom in, you'll notice it doesn't matter how far I zoom in, it stays nice and sharp because we have that path and we've got those little dots all over the place. So these are called nodes. Uh, I hope I'm getting that right. We have the handles on the nodes. We can change these curves. If I don't like how it looks, I can drag this and you'll see how it changes the curve. Uh, very slow response on the Macintosh. We can grab the actual node and we can move the whole node. If I don't like that, again, I can undo it. Control Z. It's thinking. Computer's thinking. Control Z again. It's thinking. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, so slow. Uh, and so let's click off of this. Something we should do. Man, computer is just going slow. There. All right, before we get too far into this, we should make sure we save this. File, save as. You're going to put it in the same place. You're going to go to uh, our, our class folder, the Turner folder, and then our specific class period and trimester. And we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to name this one again, Mr. T Briggs. And you'll notice the file extension has changed. It's saving it as an SVG. That's fine. We click Save. Once we've done that, we don't have to save as anymore. We can just go File, Save, once we've done that. So here's our file. We're ready to get it, re uh, get it ready for the plasma cutter. We have to make some changes. First thing we need to decide is what's getting cut out. Is the black stuff going to be a hole or is it going to be metal? In which case the white stuff would be the hole. The white stuff would be the stuff that is gone after we cut. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to decide. Once we've figured that out, we need to start connecting things. Because we want the plasma cutter to cut this out in one piece. So for this one, for me to cut this out for ease, I think it will be the easiest to say that the black parts are going to be metal. So I need to connect them all together somehow. So like this triangle, right, it needs to be attached to this outside part somewhere. The, this rectangle needs to be attached as well. It doesn't have to be attached to this. It, it can be attached to that, or it could be attached over here, or it could be both. These little inside pieces, this little triangle right here, if it's not attached, it, it won't get cut out. We'll just be left with this outline around the four, and that black piece will not be there. So anything like this, so the, the two parts of the B, the R, this R, that A, the O, uh, all of those down here, we're going to have to fix all of those. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually not too hard. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, first way we can do this is by drawing a shape. So if I draw a shape, and ugh, I don't like those colors, I'm going to come down here and change this. I'm going to make it black. And the stroke, uh, I'm just going to turn the stroke off. Uh, the PCs typically default to this, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time showing you how to do that. So I've got this one shape. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I can take this shape and I'm going to set it over top. Where should I put it? Right there? That looks okay. So now it looks right, but we have two separate pieces. Okay? So if I click on that, and I hold the shift key down and click on this, 
you can't see it, but if I zoom out, you should be able to. Now they're both selected. See that? We want to join these together. So I'm going to come up here again to Path, and we're going to click on Union. See how that box disappeared? If I check my Path, it's all one piece now. And again, if I don't like how that looks, we can, we can click on these and we can adjust them however we want. Uh, but I'm, for sake of argument, for ease, I'm going to leave it there. You don't have to go back and forth and do this every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a whole bunch of these and then I'm going to convert them all at the same time. So if my computer would catch up, there it goes. Uh, we're going to do this. Uh, uh, when I edit this video, I'll fast forward through this part. And when it's all done, we'll show you how to get everything set up the way it goes. Here we go. Oh, one last thing, too. Uh, if I draw one of these, I can copy this. Control-C to copy. And then Control-V gives me another one. So if you get one size you really like, and we can play with it, move it down, whatever you want to do. If you get a size you really like, you can copy that. So if I move that down uh, right there, that looks good. Um, I can just hit Control C or, and copy that one. And I can just uh, undo, clicked on the wrong thing. I can click on that, and I can move that guy wherever I want, and, okay, so we can, we can do all those things. Uh, I don't have to continue clicking copy, control C, if I just hit control V again, see how it gives me those pieces. So I'm going to put, you know what, I don't like that one for this, I'm going to copy this one. Gives me a second one right on top this time. Okay, so we're going to work on this for a bit and get back with you when I'm ready to show you how to finish it up. All right, so I think I've got everything uh, joined up there. Now, I'm done with these, so I'm going to select it and delete it, select it and delete it. There is one other way we can connect things. So if I go back to my node or path selection tool, I can pull nodes to where they overlap. Probably not going to work real great over here, but if I come up here on the point, so let's zoom in here. Oops, you got to be careful because control and roll the mouse also, you, you see how it selected multiple. So if I click on this and I hold the control button down and I roll it, it starts selecting paths. That can come in handy, not for what we're doing. So if I grab this and I pull it up like that to where it's overlapping, okay, uh, now, now it's overlapping and we can join just like what we did last time. You can see right here the circle, the uh, sorry, ellipse shows up, but it's not, a, not the same piece. So that's another way I could have just drug things up. In fact, on this one, why don't we show you? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this because I don't want, I think that looks silly. So undo that. There we go. Okay, so let's delete this guy. Let's go back to our path and nodes. So if I wanted to connect this using that, the, the way I just showed you, I could drag this up to where it 
it's overlapping, right? Well, that looks funny. So instead of doing it that way, if I double click on this line, I can add a new point, okay? And I can add one more. Now I can drag this middle one to where it overlaps like that. That doesn't look too bad. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that instead of doing the ellipse version. Also, way down here on these little ones, I did not bother connecting that little piece. Uh, if we were making this really big, we would wanna do that. If we're cutting it out small, these teeny little letters probably aren't going to show up very well. So now the trick is we're gonna select all of these pieces and connect them all together. So we gotta to zoom out to where we can see everything. And I'm gonna use my node and path selection tool. I'm just gonna drag a box around the whole thing. And I come back up here to path and I click union. Took it, takes a minute to think, but now it is one solid piece. You see if we click on it, all those parts, the overlapping lines are now gone. This file is almost ready to cut. The last thing we're gonna do is decide how big we want it to be. We haven't worried about it yet, now we're gonna worry about it. Before I do that, I'm gonna save it again, just so we don't lose all of the work we've just done. How do we change the size? Well, first, we're gonna set this little page to the size we want it to be. So I'm gonna go File, Document Properties. And in here, we can choose a preset or we can just type in a width and a height. Right now it's on millimeters. For ease of use with the plasma cutter, I'm gonna change it, maybe, if it lets me, to inches. And let's say I want it to be uh, six inches tall and 12 inches wide. Okay, and if I click off of here, oh, what happened? It reset. Let's try this one more time. Ah, Macintosh. You won't have this problem with the PCs. Six and 12. Okay, so we can just close this now. Oh, <laughs> do you see what I did? So let's go back, go back to document properties, and we're gonna change it to 12 and six, and you can see it reshaping in the background there. Now close that again. Uh, we're gonna get this tool, our select and transform tool. We're gonna select that and we're gonna drag it out. Now if I just grab these corner ones, we can stretch it and we can make it fit exactly that size. If I want it to be correct so it doesn't end up looking like this, if I push the control, if I hold the control key down, it locks it so it's to scale. So I'm gonna try it about there, move it up, move it over, whoa, that was exciting. Okay, so it's, it's gonna be six inches tall, but not quite 12 inches long. And with that, we save it one more time. We would save this to our USB drive. We would take it over to the plasma cutter, get it all set up, and cut it out. So that's just the first part.